I begin this video with a, an apology and a, a significant revision to the uh, to the trigger comparison chart. As I was uh, trying to figure out the window function of the uh, particularly of the siglant, the Rigol seems to work the way that uh, it's specified. The siglant has some peculiarities. And so I've put a question mark there. But in the course of that, I also went through a number of the other uh, triggers and had to make uh, a lot of revisions. You may recall I was doing the interval uh, trigger on the signal. Well, I had never mentioned that I couldn't find an equivalent Rigol function to interval nor could I find an equivalent function to uh, the dropout. Now, Rigol does have what they call timeout, but when we look at that, we'll then come back and look at the signal and we'll find out that dropout has two modes, one of which is identical to timeout in the Rigol, the other of which is actually an addition. So I've listed dropout as a second uh, or an equivalent to timeout, but it can actually do more in the siglant. So there are two trigger modes that are available in the siglant, but I could not find uh, anything equivalent in the Rigol. And we've talked about window. Uh, I'm going to move on in, in a minute and look at the Rigol in for runt triggering. And also for nth edge triggering, I'm going to uh, skip these for a little bit, uh, mainly because the runt is the same in both uh, units as far as I can tell. Nth edge is special, only the Rigol appears to have that, although you do have to pay extra for it. But in the course of that, I also discovered uh, that with regard to patterns, uh, pattern triggering, uh, I'm sorry, uh, bus triggering, that I was mistaken about the siglant having CAN and LIN bus uh, triggering and decode. It says in the uh, data sheet that they have it, but they don't. Uh, uh, the manual also uh, lists it in the index, but then does not have any pages devoted to it. Uh, the the proof in the pudding is that the, if you actually go to the menus for decode, there are no uh, CAN or LIN modes. So those are some of the changes that I've had to make to this uh, to this comparison chart. And so now let's move on and look at the, a few of the Rigol uh, trigger functions. Uh, some of which are identical to the siglant, and some of which are, uh, for example, nth edge uh, superior to the to the siglant because uh, it doesn't have an nth edge, but some that are inferior, like timeout, where uh, siglant's dropout appears to be uh, timeout plus more. I've set up a. Uh an arbitrary function on the uh, Rigol generator to generate a uh, pulse, a, a normal pulse, and then a runt pulse. Uh, this is a rather simple one. Uh, and I've applied it to both uh, the Rigol and the Siglant. And I've put both in the runt trigger mode. Now, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the Rigol because if you'll notice here, the way the runt trigger works, and maybe uh, maybe I should just talk about that first. Uh, if you have uh, a normal uh, pulse, like a clock or a data signal or whatever, and you know what its uh, normal height uh, should be, anything that's very much above that height or anything very much below are considered abnormal and you look for those. These are pretty easy to find without anything special because you can just set your trigger level above the normal and if there are any pulses up there it'll it'll sense them. 
Uh, the harder one to find is this one. And the reason is if you set your trigger level here, uh, anywhere in the middle of this pulse, it'll also detect or trigger on this pulse and this pulse. So uh, modern scopes often have a runt trigger where you can set an upper level and a lower level and it will trigger on that. You, th this may look a little bit like the window function that you saw earlier. And so uh, also sometimes runt triggers are considered to be triggers that are narrower than the normal or in rare cases perhaps even wider than the normal. Uh, I've already talked about pulse triggering which will usually find those for you. Uh, also you might want to use the interval trigger which is available on the Siglent but not on the Rigol. Uh, so this this is the uh, is the display and over here you'll see a window set where you can adjust the bottom window or the top window. So right now I'm doing the bottom window, uh, bottom uh, cursor if you will and you see if you go up here it loses trigger which it should because there are no pulses that are taller than that. And as you come down into the runt region, it, uh, it senses the runt and triggers on it right there in the center. The problem that I'm finding with the Rigol though is if you take the trigger down very far, it loses it again. Uh, come back to triggered. There's where it is. And then as you go down, it loses the trigger. Uh, the reason that's a problem is you don't know ahead of time how big this runt is going to be. And so what you'd like to do is set this trigger way down here and move this one down just a little below that so that anything in this whole area here will get caught. Uh, for some reason the Rigol doesn't seem to want to do that. On the, uh, the Siglent, uh, let me move this cable out of the way here. The uh, windows are over here and you can get to those by using this uh, lower upper. So here you have, uh, you can set to do the lower and what I'm going to do is switch to lower and then over here you see when the lower goes below that level it stops triggering but as soon as it comes above this level here it uh, it triggers and so you can set this one now let's set the upper one near the top and you see the nice thing about the Siglent is it seems to do a pretty good job with runt uh, triggering so I'm a little disappointed with the Rigol, but it may be that I'm doing something wrong. I'll look at that a little more, but that's enough on rut triggers.